Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and this is my review of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Disclaimer, Square Enix provided me with a review code for this product when the game launched. I received no monetary compensation or the like. So that out of the way, let's get started. Boy, is this an interesting game to review. Despite having played video games for 20 plus years, I was never much into Final Fantasy when I was younger. The first one I really played through was 10. When they announced the remake some 5 years ago, I decided sometime after that I would play through the original Final Fantasy 7 so that I could compare it with this new remake. So having played through Final Fantasy 7 relatively recently, it made a good comparison. But likewise, I don't exactly have nostalgia for the original game. Playing it in my mid-twenties meant that of course I will have different feelings in regards to the game as opposed to someone who played it when they were 7 or 8. Reviewing remakes in general can be a tough prospect too. Are we reviewing it as an original product or comparing it solely with the original? Well, I'll attempt to do both within reason. But perhaps the main reason this is such an interesting game to review for me is how mixed my feelings are about it. See, Final Fantasy VII Remake was a very mixed experience. Let's start with the graphics as the most obvious example. At times, Seven Remake looks absolutely amazing. The opening bombing mission, for example, looked flawless, couldn't find anything wrong with it. But then later on, there are very prominently featured textures, such as on doors that take up most of the screen in a cutscene, that are horrendously low res, and take this screenshot for example. This is a beam in your path that you have to go past and it fills up pretty much the entire screen and it's not ever going to load in another texture no matter how long you wait. And yes, sometimes this is just a streaming issue. If you sprint through areas you can see textures pop in. Other times, as mentioned, no matter how long you wait, it doesn't load in a higher detail or higher resolution texture. That's just how it is. Irrespective of if you're playing the game on a stock PS4, PS4 Pro, or PS4 Pro with an external SSD, anything like that. And suddenly I was playing on a PS4 Pro. The quality is inconsistent, which makes it all the more jarring than if it were universally bad, for example. Because you go from amazing visuals to comically bad looking visuals. And that inconsistency, that mixed experience pervades through a lot of the game experience. Well, let's touch on the remake aspects first, before we get much more into that other stuff. How faithful of a remake is 7R? Unfortunately, I can't even give a yes, it's faithful, or no, it's not faithful answer to that, because for the most part, it is a faithful remake. But there are areas where, well, it veers into spoiler territory, and I'm trying to keep this review spoiler free, hence most of the footage being from the first few hours of the game. But let's just say, when the remake is going for remaking scenes from the original, it often feels accurate or faithful to the spirit of the original idea. There are a few changes here and there, but I would say generally it is a faithful remake that plays lots of homages to the original as well. And if you were worried about uh, some of the goofy scenes, such as the whole Honey Bee Inn stuff with, you know, Cloud dressing up in a, well, a dress, that sort of goofy stuff is still in there, thankfully. Which makes me hope that in, I don't know, part 2 or 3 we're going to have uh, Red 13 dressed up as a human doing his weird waggling dance and the bit where Sephiroth hucks a materia at Cloud's head and then flies past him. I'd love to see that in very realistic graphics. There are also areas where it feels like a fitting recreation of the original in less obvious ways, such as scenes where Cloud and the immediate surroundings are 3D models, but the backgrounds are pre-rendered 2D images, just like in the original. I thought it was nice, as you don't see that often these days, but I think they can work very well when implemented well. Their implementation here is okay, it's not perfect though, because there are definitely scenes where the backgrounds just look a little fuzzy or not great, but for the most part I think 2D backgrounds can work very well. Especially in a game with no dynamic time of day, it means you don't have to worry about, you know, light sources changing. And yes, on that note, 7R, well, it's not a dynamic day-night system. It will change from day to night at set points in the story, which allows all the lighting in the game to be done manually, which is usually the better way to do it at the moment until we can get proper ray tracing 
to make it more realistic with the light sources changing. But yes, manually placed static lighting is very good when done well. But perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself with all this. What is the premise of Final Fantasy VII? Maybe someone doesn't have any idea about it. Well, you play as Cloud Strife, a rather aloof-seeming mercenary who gets caught up in the dealings of Avalanche, a terrorist organization working at taking down the Shinra Corporation, who they believe are killing the planet by using its life source as a form of energy. They are bleeding the planet dry just to make electricity. Cloud presents himself as an ex-soldier, an elite fighter who used to work for Shinra, and is haunted by strange visions and echoes of his past, very small portions of which are revealed over the course of the game. This remake covers the Midgar section of Final Fantasy VII. In the original, this was the opening 5-10 to 10 hours, perhaps, of a 50-hour game. For comparison, the original Final Fantasy VII took me 50 hours to beat it. I did, you know, all the content, apart from, you know, grinding to level 100. 7R took me 40 hours to beat. That was just Midgar. I will say that Square weren't super clear about how much this game would cover, as I think it's fair to assume that some more casual fans wouldn't realise this isn't the entire game. It isn't called Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1, it's just called Final Fantasy VII Remake. And it isn't the entire game, it's the... it's not even the first quarter of the game, really. Just the Midgar section. But, again, we'll get more into that later. Gameplay is now a hybrid action RPG compared to the original's uh, ATB turn-based system. This means the game is a lot harder in some ways, the combat is much more intense. Take the Rufus fight in the original where it was basically attack, 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 win. Now it's more like some sort of Devil May Cry-esque fight where he's, uh, he's well I'm not even going to spoil it but he's doing some pretty wacky stuff I'll tell you that. Although it does provide an easy and classic set of options, one of which has the characters automatically attacking and defending, you just choose the actions. Basically, as you manually attack enemies with square, you will build up your ATB meter. When it is full, you can do a stronger attack, or use a magic spell or item. Which abilities the characters use is partially determined by the materia system. Weapons and accessories equipped by the characters have slots into which you can place materia. For example, you could have a heal materia, which allows you to cast the healing spell, or a materia that allows you to use the steal action, and so on. Most of these materia can be leveled up too. When you level up the heal materia, you go from cure to cura to curaja, and also regen, for example. And then some materia can be used in conjunction with others, such as, say, if you have two linked materia slots on your sword, then you can link a heal materia with a magnify materia, which means the heal will hit all targets of your team instead of just one, although at a lower potency. In general, materia system feels very good and modern, despite being a near exact port of the original game's materia system, which is just a sign of how well that gameplay mechanic has aged in the 20 plus years since. Another system I really like in this remake is the weapon system. Instead of each weapon you find being a flat upgrade of your existing weapon, different weapons in the remake provide you with different options. Each has its own skill tree in which you can buy things such as more health or more magic attack or physical attack and whatnot. This allows you to tailor each weapon for specific things. Maybe you want one weapon suited for attacking, another for magic, one for tanking. You can do that. Likewise, even if different characters might lean more towards one area than another, you have the freedom to largely build them how you please, just by changing their weapon and their materia. Ares, for example, is more of a magic casting type, but you could make her more physical attacker if you wished. Likewise, Tifa is more of like a monk, a punching physical attacker, but you could make her your magic user if you wished. It's a very good system, and I've been saying for years and years and years that I prefer these horizontal style upgrade and progression systems as opposed to vertical ones like in Borderlands where every five minutes you get a new gun and your old gun is worthless, or every new sword is stronger than the old sword, and every new MMO expansion just gives you ten more levels making everything up to that point redundant and sort of pointless. So 7R gets points there, a, a lot of points from me. As for the actual combat, well as mentioned, it is mixed. At times it feels very fun and rather fluid, other times it feels frustrating. 
game has a dodge and a block system, but it's very hard to completely negate damage, as you have to realise a lot of the damage is somewhat automated and you just need to mitigate it instead, almost more like an MMO than an action game. When you're fighting a boss in Final Fantasy XIV, for example, if you are the tank, then assuming everyone dodges every AoE, then you would theoretically know exactly how much damage you are going to take through the course of the encounter and mitigate accordingly. And action and RPG elements sometimes don't mesh all that well. For example, first time I fought um, a certain boss in 7R, an optional boss, it was flat out impossible because of how the numbers work. I came back five levels later and I beat it first try, even though nothing really had changed other than numbers arbitrarily increasing, you know? And that feels slightly at odds with the action, more Devil May Cry style combat. The ATB system in 7R can be annoying too. Let's say your team are injured, you need to shoot out a heal, so you have a character expend both their ATB and their MP, their magic points, to heal. Only then an enemy kills you or staggers you whilst you're in the middle of casting it. But you still spent the ATB and the MP. It's very frustrating, and obviously that doesn't happen in the original where it's more turn-based. It's a flaw and makes the combat feel needlessly annoying when it happens. Yet I would say for the most part this is the best Final Fantasy active combat system. Now granted we don't have many to compare it with, but 15 would be the nearest comparison. I would say this is mostly a better system than 15's. However, I think 15 had a better summoning system in that it made summons feel very powerful and cool and game changers, and 15's Link Strike system was really nice too. Summons in 7R feel underwhelming to me. In essence, during tough encounters, summons have a chance to appear a little like 15, but then you can choose whether to summon them or not, and once they are summoned, they will fight for a while, you can give them commands, then when they leave, they'll perform their signature attack. And yet, the way in which you acquire them feels very fake and unimpressive to me, and it makes them feel a lot less special. Aside from those two areas though, I think the combat is better than 15s and very functional and cool. I really want to see Sid because, as you may or may not be aware, Sid is both my favourite 7 character and also a Dragoon, my favourite Final Fantasy class. I love spears and jumping around like a lunatic. Gameplay is good for the most part. The visuals range from amazing to comical with the landscapes, although the character models are all excellent, unless we're talking about the random NPC villagers who look like they're ported straight from 15 and don't look good. Lighting is great, and the performance is solid too. Although the game runs at 30 FPS, it's a relatively smooth feeling 30 FPS. That is to say it has proper frame pacing and well implemented per object motion blur to make everything feel smooth. Another example of this would be Gears of War 3 back on the Xbox 360. These are both games where you don't recognise the frame rate during gameplay, which is the important part. Now of course, a locked 60 FPS would be better, but it doesn't detract from the experience. I didn't notice any frame dips, that's the important thing. Frame rate, I would argue, is most important in being consistent. A locked 30 FPS is better than a frame rate that hits 60 10% of the time, and the other 90% of the time is dipping down all over the place. I was playing 7R on my PS4 Pro, and I'm not sure what resolution it was displayed at, but it did have HDR enabled, and you might notice the colours look a bit uh, off in this review. They might look oversaturated. That's because of how the HDR isn't properly captured and exported via the PS4's capture system. But, you know, rest assured, playing on an HDR TV, properly calibrated, the game looks great with the colours and so on. As for the audio side of things, well, the game has both an English and a Japanese dub, and possibly, I don't know, some others like German and French, and I went with the Japanese one. The English one seems pretty solid, but there's there's a thing with Japanese games where you have a lot of younger characters sounding really bad in dubs, and it completely breaks my immersion as I can't stop noticing it. Final Fantasy XIV, to use that as another comparison again. It has a very good English dub, for the most part. All of the performances are pretty good. But then you have Alizé. The performance itself is fine, you know. If Alizé was, you know, an adult, it would be fine. But Alizé is meant to be like a teenager, and has like a baby face, and you have this very mature voice coming out of the baby face, and it breaks my immersion. <laughs> you know, it would break your immersion if you were playing 7R, and then I was voicing Barrett. you know? It's very common 
in Japanese things, as they really like having kids and teenagers being main characters running around battering gods. You might think that would break my immersion too, huh? By the way, the main cast in the English dub all seemed pretty good. Some of the NPCs sound like they're from the Dynasty Warriors 3 dub though. Soundtrack in the remake is great. There's a lot of nice retouched songs from the original, including all of fan favourite tracks. Final Fantasy has long been a series renowned for its great music, and that remains the case. Whilst the original seven tracks were composed in such a way that they didn't exactly change during combat, this new version has phases which can help the music amp up as the fights near their climax, which is a great system. And again, one I can't really go into because of spoilers, but the last two proper bosses, if you've played it, then you'll know what I mean. So now we get onto the pacing and the padding, which is an area I'm frustrated with. See, when you stretch out Midgar into a 40-hour experience, you of course are going to pad things out. In some cases, these expanded sections are nice, as they give more depth to characters or more understanding of the world. For example, early on, very minor spoilers, but this happens, you know, within the first two hours of the game, really. You go on a little venture with Jesse, Biggs and Wedge that is entirely new and not in the original game, unless I had a seizure and blacked out during that segment. And this is a good example of expanding story content to give us more context and depth and understanding of these characters. But then, well... Near the end of the game, there's a part where you need to leave a certain area. Instead of just leaving, you go through this very protracted sequence of opening several doors, going through combat areas, and then doing it again, swapping back and forth, and it adds nothing to the game beyond padding out the length. There's a lot of moments like that in the game, which are very frustrating, as I don't want to play through padding and filler. So yeah, it's mixed. The bits that genuinely add stuff to the story will help us understand the characters are good. The hub section fetch quests are bad. Much like 15 had side quests where we randomly delivered vegetables for people, 7R has quests where we are finding cats and other pointless details that feel like bottom of the barrel MMO side quests, you know? Pointless padding that you should be able to skip, and you can skip, but you probably shouldn't because then you have some things that are locked behind it that you probably wouldn't want to miss. Now much of this stems from perhaps the idea that the developers aren't entirely sure how to handle the rest of the game. After all, once you leave Midgar, the game opens up a lot. How are we going to handle that in this remake? Are we going to have a similar overworld? map, where we waddle around a 3D map and then enter separate maps? Are we going to have a true open world like Red Dead Redemption? Are we going to skip from area to area and choose locations from a list, more like 10? We'll find out, I suppose, but I definitely see a lot of the problems that would come from a remake like this. That was why I was so curious to see how they would tackle it. Much of the interest, for me personally, isn't so much a fascination of the game world and its story and characters, but rather seeing how the developers are tackling the problems that arise in handling the remake. But yes, in summary, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a very mixed experience for me. I think a lot of these problems can thankfully be ironed out with patches and the like, and a PC release would also probably fix the texture issues here and there. It would also give us a 60 FPS plus experience, which would make it even more impressive to look at, and hey, I imagine someone could even mod the PC version to cut out all of the bad filler and padding, but keeping the actual moments that expand upon the game world. But can I suggest to the game? Well, if you're a fan of the original, then yeah, I can. If you're into action RPGs, then I can suggest it too. I think it's a very interesting game, and quite fun to play too. It's, uh, what, 40 some hours for the price tag, which I think is worth it, plus then you also have New Game Plus and hard mode things, and there are some bosses and items that are locked into the hard mode, so there is a bit of replay value as well. As for how our progress will transition to the next game, whenever that comes out, Again, we'll have to wait and see. I hope it does though, otherwise what's the point of obtaining all these materia, grinding all the skills out and doing everything if we start over at the beginning of the next art? I mean, is Yuffie, Yuffie, is she gonna show up and just nick all our materia? She better not. But thank you so much for watching at any rate, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And if you have beaten the game, and are wondering what I felt about, say, the ending and such, 
Well, I think it was kind of silly, and I'm curious to see how it will impact things further down the road. I will say, more generally, I'm not a fan of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. I don't really like all these extra things that have come out since, that, I don't know, seem to miss the mark a bit, and how it got more and more wild, like that Genesis guy, and no. Nor am I a fan of Nomura's Kingdom Hearts nonsensical storylines, where it's just a complete mess, so anything like that which would bleed into the remake would not be welcome to me. But hey, you have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Ciao.